Well, hundreds of studies are underway looking into the long term effects of COVID-19 on the human body. Here in the Bay Area, UCSF is looking into COVID brain fog. It's a symptom that causes difficulty to think or concentrate, and the research is bringing up some interesting findings. Here to explain is Dr. Joanna Helmuth. She is with UCSF's Memory and Aging Center. Doctor, thank you for joining me here. Uh, I My father is a long hauler COVID symptom um, you know, patient, so this is really interesting uh, for me to be able to discuss this with you. Brain fog is one of his main issues. Is that the number one issue long haulers are dealing with? Well, there are many issues that people are facing uh, after COVID and uh, these cognitive changes are one of the main ones that people are reporting. You know, it's quite different. Everyone experiences something different, but as a neurologist, I'm seeing many, many people, young and old, teenagers to 80 year olds with these cognitive changes after COVID. He got COVID uh, about two years after he suffered a small stroke as well. Um, so I know that that might compound with it. When it comes to the type of patients that you're seeing, are, are folks dealing with brain fog ones that had uh, pre-existing issues or are is it kind of across the board? You know, that's a great question. You know, we had a paper that just came out today that looked at these issues and we found that the people who had COVID who developed cognitive issues had more of what we call these cognitive risk factors. Mm -hmm. um, these things that make people more at risk for cognitive issues. And the group of people who had COVID who didn't get cognitive issues had, had many fewer of these cognitive risk factors. So not proven yet, but it certainly mm -hmm. suggests that certain people might be more vulnerable to these cognitive changes. Definitely. Um, you know, when it comes to looking at COVID, I feel like, as you were kind of saying, there's still so many questions that are left to be answered that are going to be answered over the next several years as we continue to, um, you know, research and, and talk with people who are dealing with it. When it comes to brain fog, what are the main, I guess, symptoms of it? Yeah, so, you know, really these fall into a category of what we call executive function symptoms. These are symptoms that are really kind of taken on by the front part of the brain and connections with deeper parts of the brain. These are things like concentrating on a task, mm -hmm. difficulty remembering that comes back to you with time, difficulty efficiently finding the words you want to use, holding on for information as you walk from one room to the other, remembering why you went there. And then mm -hmm. some people experience slowed processing speed. They just feel like their brain is working slower than it used to. I, uh, my dad specifically, I know he's taking, he has occupational therapy. It was something that he started after uh, his strokes. So um, it, he's continuing to do that. What can people do to maybe kind of overcome this brain fog situation? No, I think that's a great question. You know, we're still doing research right now to understand what's underlying this and what's causing this. You know, we had a study come out today suggesting that maybe there's inflammation in the brain compartment that's contributing to this. But right now we don't know the specific mechanism, so it's really hard to suggest a specific intervention. What we recommend is that people do things that we know are good for brain health. We know that exercise, if people are able to tolerate it, is really great for the brain and how the brain functions. So I really recommend people get cardiovascular exercise if they can. Stay socially active, cognitively active, eat a good heart healthy diet because what's good for the heart is good for the brain too. Okay, and when it comes to, I guess, another patient question, are you seeing folks dealing with brain fog that had more severe cases, like they were in the hospital, that sort of thing, or are you starting to see it even in those who had mild and moderate cases? You know, we see it all across the board. You know, many people who are hospitalized had very severe disease and so have a lot of reasons to have cognitive changes after having had COVID. What I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of people who had mild disease, never even had to go to the doctor, never went to a hospital, wrote it out at home, and now, you know, have cognitive issues that either started when they were acutely with COVID or even started weeks or months later. So we still have a lot to learn about what's happening with these viruses that affect thinking and memory. Anything else you think folks should keep in mind, uh, mind, brain, uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, dealing with brain fog if they're sitting at home right now? I know you mentioned exercise, that sort of thing, but anything else you can think of that, that folks should be uh, considering or thinking about? Yeah, two things. One, think about adaptive strategies. So often people have difficulty taking on a lot of information at once. So try taking on information in smaller chunks, writing down lists, so that way you can uh, have a pathway to be more successful. I also think prevention is really important. We're still in the Omicron peak, and I think that people need to really be careful to not catch this. 
be get vaccinated, get boosted, and wear an N95 when you're out because you really don't want to catch this. We don't know if you're the person who's going to get these cognitive changes after COVID, and I really don't want that for any of you out there. And doctor, do you do you have any idea at this point what exactly it is about COVID-19 that has caused people to deal with brain fog? Well, we know that other viruses are associated with this too. So other viral infections can cause these cognitive changes, but we've never had a virus that's been on such a broad scale internationally where so many people are experiencing this at once. We know that in other viruses that cause these cognitive changes, that inflammation in the body and or the brain might be associated with this. So we think that this might be a response of the immune system kind of acting in a bad way uh, after the virus, but we still have a lot to learn about the matter. Well, I appreciate you doing all you can to learn as much as you can about this. Uh, Dr. Helmuth, thank you so much for joining us. Certainly, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you.